Hi and welcome to Moodle 2 at the Blake School. In this tutorial, I will be discussing how to create a glossary. Glossaries are amazing activities. If you want a place on your Moodle course page uh, where terms and concepts can be listed and definitions all the way to detailed explanations uh, can be shown. One of the cool things about it is uh, like many of the activities in Moodle, um, it's, it's indexed in the way that uh, auto-linking um, can be created. Meaning, if you had a concept about the Blake School, let's say the mission, um, but yet somewhere else in someone else's explanation and talking about the mission, those things will be automatically uh, interlinked. The other cool thing about it, much like other activities in Moodle, is the ability for the teacher to give ratings. In other words, grade something that they do in Moodle. So not only is it useful for uh, the course in that other students can see and can give um, comments to and can potentially uh, make edits depending on how you set things up, but also it'll end up in the Moodle gradebook. So activities that you have students do, um, you look at it as the teacher, you give it some sort of a rating based on a rubric that you've set up for your students, you've given a grade to it, that grade automatically gets to the student and it's recorded in the gradebook, at which point you may use one of our other gradebook software then to transmit that information uh, for our transcripts. But uh, there's less steps you need to do in order to record and give feedback to the students. So that's pretty cool. So um, with glossary, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a glossary here uh, on this um, Moodle page. And I'm gonna do so first by turning editing on. After I turn editing on, uh, you'll see uh, the standard Moodle uh, editing tools. In this case, under here, add an activity or resource. I am going to go down to, what are we doing? Glossary. Of course, like everything else in Moodle, uh, when you click on something, if it's a well uh, fleshed out um, activity, it's got information on what it can do, some things that are very basic. And of course, clicking on um, uh, more help will will bring you to the Moodle 2.5 or later um, help at Moodle.org. So a little bit of information from the mothership as things are are updated, uh, which is cool. Okay, so I'm going to click on Add and I'm going to create a glossary. In this case, this glossary that I'm going to make today is just going to be called the Blake School. I'm just going to say, please enter informative entries into uh, this glossary to help us understand better the Blake School. So in this pretend exercise here, we're just going to be entering all things Blake. Um, one important distinction here um, are glossary types. Um, a main glossary um, is... Uh, something in which entries from a secondary glossary can be imported. There can only be one main entry per course. Um, glossary entry imports um, is not required. All glossaries in the course can be secondary glossaries. So what I'm going to do here is because this is not going to be the main glossary on this page, I could have one just called for my course main glossary and all things from there can link into it. Let me give you an example. This was in my environmental science course and we had one main thing on grand big environmental science topics and then some smaller ones that would relate into it. We could do that or we could have one main um, um, glossary and then as we enter different readings and students have readings in the environmental science class, I might make links to keywords and then to a bibliography. The bibliography could be in the secondary glossary. That way, let's say automatic linkage to something um, that we read about moose and wolf um, activity on Isle Royal. If they click on the moose wolf link, it will automatically bring in information from the secondary glossary that will have links to the various readings that we had. So you can have um, metadata um, in that way or background information come in using the secondary glossary. Is this glossary global? Having a global glossary um, linked throughout the site and not just your course. Um, I would encourage you not to do this. Um, you never know if your information is going to be viable, uh, let's say, um, 
if you want definitions coming from the upper school into a second grader's glossary that may not be appropriate. So that's, that's something that we might want to avoid. Um, by having a display description on the course page, of course, when it shows the Blake School, it's going to give a little bit of blurb down below it saying what this is all about. And you might want to give that information. This is also a place where you give some information to students about what their role is, what they're supposed to be doing. So maybe here under Blake School here, you could say enter um, more information in this, um, this glossary. So I like to, in the title of things, um, give a little bit of information to the students of what they're supposed to be doing, just in case some students missed what that is. Entries. Um, approved by default. If you have just asked students to go ahead and shotgun this, put all kinds of great things in there right now, and you want other students to have access to them right away, you can put yes. By clicking no, it means that those uh, glossaries come to you as the teacher for approval first before they are rated and put up uh, by the students. Always allow editing. After some point in time, you might say that this is uh, done being entered, done being edited, and this is, has become static information. I always keep editing open. Um, duplicate entries allowed. This would prevent, uh, let's say, uh, in this case, I'm going to do an entry right now when, when we're done showing the setup here about the mission and uh, values at the Blake School. If you only want one entry called mission and values, this will prevent uh, the duplicate entries from being put in. Um, I'm not going to allow duplicate entries for that reason. I'll allow comments on entries? Yes, I want other students and other people to be able to give information saying, hey, mission and values, I think that's been updated. Perhaps you might consider updating your entry um, as a way of communicating um, on the back end of this. Automatically link glossary entries. Yes, that is the most powerful version of this. So anywhere within the glossary and some places on my Moodle page, uh, we're going to have cross-linking back and forth, and that becomes um, the semantic web, right? It becomes aware of other information um, that's out there, and it's very cool. Appearance. I'm For the sake of displaying this for you today, the simple dictionary style, this is for example, a word and a definition, um, you can get much more um, involved in it. And I encourage you to um, go on to uh, Moodle.org and look at some of these different ones or create some yourself and begin poking around in there. But there really is um, a, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot that can be done here, and it's pretty cool. Entry shown per page, I typically leave that on the default. This means um, if I click on the letter A, uh, all things beginning with the letter A, um, this will show 10 dictionary type definitions under the letter A. And if I have more than 10, it allows me to show page two, three, etc. Um, I would keep it to 10 or below, especially if your pages become long. You want to avoid that whole scroll of death and the length of um, your page rendering. Um, show alphabetical links. Once again, yes, this is, you know, all things under A, all things under B, etc. And all allow students to see the full scope, which is great. Um, special link. I don't even know what that is. That's brand new. Um, if enabled, participants can browse the glossary with special characters. Hmm, okay. So uh, perhaps uh, you tell your students um, that you want them to have a keyword, um, dollar sign something, um, for some sort of a special purpose. This allows special characters to be used. And allow print view. This makes those views um, that a, uh, if a student is, is looking up the mission and values of the Blake School, if for some reason you want to encourage them to make hard copies of certain things, this allows the printing of that um, much easier. Um, if you have categories set up in your gradebook, which I don't in this course, uh, this allows those categories to be set. Let's say you had a category for assessment and um, a category for um, research and a category for homework and a category for uh, um, service. If you want to rank those and have those weighted differently in your um, or categorized and, and ranked in your uh, gradebook, that's the place to do that. Ratings. So this... Um, uh, is the type so if you if you tell students uh, they can do one entry um, that would be graded one way if they're if they're graded um, another way let's say that you needed them to have five ratings um, you could set that or the average of the ratings or uh, the minimum rating so you say you do ten entries and uh, you will be graded on your lowest grade uh, that's what that would be
or, or on the sum of them or on the maximum. Um, so let's say for now we just set that for um, average and I might say that this whole exercise is worth uh, 100 points. Okay, and of course, like everything else in Moodle, uh, you can restrict those um, the common settings for groups and access and activity completion um, are all on here, just like all other activities in, in Moodle. So I'm going to save and I'm going to display this one and let's make a, a first entry. So it's now created my dictionary. This is what it looks like. And I want to add a new entry. And I'm just going to call it, uh, the concept is uh, the Blake, well, this is already, it's all about the Blake School. So I'm just going to call it mission and values. And under here in the definition, Say the date today. And put that in there. So we know that we've got these various things. And like other things um, at Blake, uh, you could go ahead and uh, begin adding um, bold and those sorts of things. So you go in and change that as we need. I'm not going to um, make it all pretty right now, uh, but you get the idea. Here under keywords, this makes searching stronger. So if a student is searching for something, um, this is where you might, um, it, it isn't in the title, but you might, you might want them uh, to be available. You might pick out a couple of the uh, Im important things here. and create those keywords. Attachments, this allows you to attach a document. Let's say you had a PDF that was about the development of um, uh, pluralism and uh, commitments within the values and missions. You, you might add a, an attachment there or an image. Um, yes, I'd like it to be automatically linked. Uh, I don't want to worry about case sensitivity and, or whole words. So uh, whole words lets you do things like um, uh, let, let's say a student was, spe was looking for the word responsible and didn't know that is in here under responsibility. So responsible and responsibility each have this responsive uh, portion here. Um, if you clicked match whole words only, it would only look under responsibility, not responsive. So in this case, because this is a real general entry, um, I'm going to leave that unclicked. So if I go ahead and save changes, you'll see now um, this is what what the entry looks like needs a little bit of cleanup um, and we've also got these various keywords that might have been searched on so that is uh, um, uh, using um, glossary and uh, as I said this is the most simple of glossary that I have showed you and it can be uh, much more extensible and exciting uh, give it a try Give it a try. It's a little bit different than using um, a Google Doc in the way that things are indexed. Um, however, it is a way to collaboratively um, build um, knowledge and information on your Moodle page. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give it a try. Uh, give, us, um, give us a shout on support.blakeschool.org if you have any questions about using.